What's cracking, movie trivia Schmodown fans? It's your boy C Dub Chris Woodburn, and it's a new season. We're back. Today, the debut match we got Rachel the Crusher Cushing taking on Mike K.O. Kalinowski and Little Evil himself, J.T.E. This is going to be a fantastic match. I'm going for the crusher in this one. So let's get it started. Uh, there's been so much that's happened over the past year. It's crazy that it's been a year. It is a whole new year, 2018, and a lot of stuff uh, we cannot talk about. What I've always, what I've started out to do was to, you know, get this league to diversify in, in every way it possibly can. And clearly that was for women, that was for behind the scenes people, that was for introverted people. And now it's, it's continuing to grow and that's what I love to see about it. 2017 was a kick-ass year for you, so it was. I'm gonna embrace need, that. I don't need an award to tell me that. I mean, people watch the show. They know how great I am. Really feeling good going. It's, I've got a shot at this belt now. I'm going for it. I'm not going to sleep on it. We're going to see what's going to happen. Hopefully, I'll have a little more uh, lady luck on my side with the wheel. I'm a winner. I've been a champion for a year. Well, here's the thing about this award. All this is going to remind me is I had a year where I was losing. I don't want this freaking award. I don't need something to remind me that I was cheated game after game after game. Because all you guys see is the L's and the W's. This is nothing but a reminder of a loser. And we've all proved I am not that. <laughs> I'm getting more confidence with each win. That's where I'm going, and I think I can go toe to toe with the big guys now. Play it like there's no tomorrow. Leave your pride on the line. Work hard every minute and step up to the starting gun. Play it like there's no tomorrow. Leave your pride. like you. <laughs> Sorry. All right. It is it's a pleasure to see everybody. I kid you. It is really nice to see the you. The chemistry brother. has never been better. Never been better. We are back, my friend. It is season five of the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Thank you guys so much. As you saw last Friday, we had the Movie Trivia Schmodown Awards this past Tuesday. Myself and that despicable character, Ken Knapsack, broke down. Everything that was going to happen in Season 5, we have a lot of great matches. And one of the great things that we have introduced this season, me and this guy have taken over the production of this entire show. We're paying for it. And in order to do that, we needed your help. So we launched Please. the Patreon. It launched yesterday. And you guys can find out all the tiers that we offer for you. We're going to get new writers. We're going to get um, we're gonna get more, more talent in here. We're going to have more matches we're going to have undercards. We're going to be able to do all these new writers. There's so much. Better wardrobe for him. Absolutely. We need to do so much, and we're going to be doing so much to grow this league, to grow this sport, this movie trivia sport, as it has become, and you guys have made it, and you guys helping have absolutely is going to get us to the next level. So I thank you. Go ahead and check out. We have 16 tiers right now available on the Patreon. Go ahead. But 
one of those things you get to see right now. As we are excited, it is the season premiere. And how about the triple threat match for the number one contender? Mark Ellis, what a battle we got. Yeah, talk about some celebrities already in the movie trivia showdown. JTE, Mike Kalinowski, and Rachel the Crusher Cushing. A triple threat is the perfect way to kick it off. You know, you think we're used to this by now, but you get that fresh juice from a new season. I feel like a virgin, and I'm ready to get touched for the very first time. All right. Um, and I think that if you get, if you have, uh, you look at the three, you should say it is the new guard versus the old guard. You have two of the new guard going up, going up against the old guard. JTE has played in over 20 matches in his Schmodown career. 68 years young today. He has played He has played so many matches since he was the first match we ever had, going back to where he and Copster started this thing off. And now here's JTE. One year from last year's spectacular, he is still the reigning team champion. He was 5-2, and two, just lost to Sam Levine, the reigning champion, in the Ultimate Schmodown in the finals. He beat Mike Kalinowski. Uh, Rachel Cushing has beaten Mike Kalinowski in inner geekdom. They've all kind of tangled. They all are really waiting to tangle with the current champion, Sam Levine. That's right. Certainly 2017, a huge season for Kalinowski and for Rachel the Crusher Cushing, winning Rookie of the Year amongst other honors at the Schmodown Awards. But JTE, Come he's the real the question mark because he was coming back player of the year so will his demons will it be like an insidious movie where the demons come back every two years or did he bury 2016 right. for good well that's that seems to be if you look if you look at the you go to the movie trivia showdown facebook group and everybody's talking about Join it. cushing and they're talking jte the poll has the two of them neck and neck and there's mike kalinowski Who? with 15 percent of the vote and I think that is a disservice to what Mike Kalinowski has done over this year. He is four and two. He has three knockouts. He played great. He played JTE great in the semifinals of the Ultimate Showdown. I don't. I think it would be a mistake for anybody to crowd, especially the competitors, to take Mike Kalinowski uh, lightly. I think we forget about the element of chance when it comes to a movie trivia showdown. Even when you have competitors as great as this, we know that Rachel Cushing has a variety of categories that are her strength as is JT Kalinowski he gets the right wedge on a wheel he's as dangerous as anybody in the game all right so we're going to hear from the competitors right now it's 2018 Schmodown fans and this is the inaugural match it's a big match I'm happy to be a part of it and I'm going to win it the fatal three-way uh this is my first fatal three-way if I don't look nervous it's because there's nothing about That comes off to me is fatal. Uh, it's definitely fatal for the other two. Looking back, this is a year in the making, this match right now. Look at those two guys that I'm facing against. Both losses. Now, I'm going to give it to Rachel Cushing. My loss against her in her geekdom, I have nothing to say about that. It was a fair match. She, she was a better player. JT, though, can't say that about it. The match should have been mine. I should have fought harder. I, I got too cocky going into it. Way too cocky going into that match. That's my fault. Nine months ago, you couldn't have ever told me that this is where I would be standing. Yeah, here I am. It was a hell of a year. 2017 will go down in the record books. I'm in the record books. But 2018, that's where I'm going to really make my mark. This is a big match because it puts me on the road to getting the belt. I want to tell you people what it's like to be a champion. Uh, but honestly, you'll never know uh, because very few of you will actually be able to be one. Uh, it's a sad reality in this world. Uh, only a few people make it to the top and are able to hold a belt. Now, if you're lucky and you get to hold a belt for like maybe a month like Levine or some of these other teams who get it for like maybe a couple weeks, once you have it for a year, you're a champ. Not only that, well, you're one of the all-time great champs. So can I explain it to you? Can I tell you what it's like? No. You guys are sleeping on me. I'm the, like, well, Christian put that poll up, what was it, like 17%? I, I think it even actually went down with those two guys. Those guys are the favorites, you know what? But guess what? Both of those guys, they faced off against Sam Levine. And what happened? They lost. I have to go through two guys, two gentlemen, well, one gentleman and one little evil, to get to that belt. But I'm ready to do that because the 2017 year might have been the year of JTE, but 2018, that's the year of the crusher. Rachel's a strong player. Mike, is. I last time I beat him, I had maybe one of my worst games of last year. So I don't understand why he's even this match. They should seat him in the audience. Like, just put him over there. He could yell out his wrong answers. Now, Geppetto, I, I don't know what to tell you, pal. I, I, I hope you're going to show up, and I'm sure the clown car will be out there, and all 20 of you guys will be piling out there with your belts, loud mouths and everything. You're good. I'll give it to you that. You had a great year. But guess what, buddy? Your year's over. Your year's done. I think you know it, too. I think you know it, too. I think you know you're ready, ready to fall off that peak that you're on. And guess what? I'm going to be the guy there that just goes like this. Pushes you right off it, buddy. Look, I'm not about revenge, but I'm not going to lie. Ken's betrayal, 
the whole way that the lion's den conducts themselves, I abhor, and I am ready to do everything I can to take them down. But it's not gonna be about trash talk, it's not gonna be about any of that, it's gonna be about trivia, because that's what I'm good at. So when we get out in that ring, look out, JTE, look out, lion's den. I mean, obviously, JTE likes to talk smack. He's good at it. Big fan of himself. He can back it up, though. In 2016, he couldn't back it up. It was nonsense when he would talk. When he was literally talk. a blithering idiot, but he, now he, he's back. He, but he was. I mean, he would talk. He would say how great he was, and he didn't have anything on his shoulder. He wasn't winning in matches. That's not the case right now. Look, he's beaten people. Look, Bibiani, McWeeny, um, uh, Kalinowski, uh, Ken Knapsack. He, he, the guy just, he won. He won a lot last year. And now he wants that shot. He wants Levine badly. He beat Levine in teams at the Showdown Spectacular, but Levine has won over him <laughs> in, in, the, in the singles. So Rachel Cushing, though, she has now. She has had a chance for the number one contender spot at Inner Geekdom, just came up short. Had a chance at teams, just came up short. This is her shot at singles. Can she do it? Yeah, I mean, if I had a crippling gambling addiction that has seen me live in a studio apartment for over 20 years, which I may or may not have, I would bet on Rachel the Crusher Cushing. She's got all the momentum right now. She wants to beat these boys badly. She's as competitive as they come, and I think you're going to see that manifest itself in a big W to kick off her season. Well, we're ready to kick it off right now. Are you ready? Oh, you're damn right I'm ready. Let's touch some people. What? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Good to be back. Good three, to be back. Three rounds. The triple threat for the number one contender in the singles division. Introducing first, representing the league with a record of four wins, two defeats, and three knockouts. King led to the ring by Miss Movie, Brianne Chandler. Here's Zola Evil with his belt. 
There's the Take movie. Care of it. The Lions have oh, always no. come together one way or another. Oh, look at... Oh, wow, he's shaking his hands. Wait, yes, what's Ken? What's Ken? Is look at Ken. No. Oh. oh, Ken just laughing at Rachel. Still the heel. laughing at Rachel. Still being ice cold. Well, you got a big match here. Ken Napsok and Tom Dagnino go up against Rachel Cushing and her new partner whenever we find out who that is. That'll happen really soon. But right now, that's not why we're here. I can tell you who's going to win that one. I cannot tell you who's going to win this one. Well, All right, here we go. The number one contender match. It is a triple threat match. Here is how it works, Mark. What's rule number one? Rule number one. In round one, rule number one means that it is round number one, and here are the rules. Each competitor is going to hear a series of eight questions. They are asked two to the field. As soon as the question is finished being asked, please write down your best attempt at an answer on the whiteboard in front of you. Once we ask each individual competitor to give your answer, please show the whiteboard to the cameras at the same time you verbalize your answer into the microphone. Each question is worth one point. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round one. JTE is sitting in the favorites chair, Chris. With these triple threat matches, you never know which way they're going to go. JT, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do this. John Aski, you ready? Uh, Gepetto. <laughs> do you the disease? I'm the cure! Uh, <laughs> to watch JT's eyes right. glaze over as somebody <laughs> makes yet another Gepetto joke brings my heart joy. Rachel Cushing, are you ready? Can I just say... JTE, we reached out to you. We wanted to coordinate entrances, mm. and look who decided not to. Oh, 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 oh. Well, listen, but yeah, yeah. we put it out. Yeah, you're second-rate players, and you're definitely like second-rate Stallone impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. Well, I'm pretty sure. Like trivia, I'm pretty we'll sure you're uh, second-rate. You're like Ace Ventura when nature calls. <laughs> All right, Man. I guess that Rachel's ready, and if that's the case, then let's get ready to schmooze. <laughs> Question number one comes to you in the world of dramas. Who plays DiCaprio's rival, John Fitzgerald, in The Revenant? Did you notice how quickly JT came up with another mountain climber to reference? To <laughs> one, like, I forgot that Ace climbed Murray. a mountain. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. JTE. Uh, Tom Hardy. Correct. Kalinowski. Squiggly line. Squiggly line is incorrect. <laughs> uh, Rachel. Tom Hardy. All right, yeah. so there you go. Rachel and JT taking the lead over Kalinowski here. All right, number two. Here we go. In the world of comedies, in the movie Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby, who played French Formula One driver and Bobby's arch rival, Jean Girard? You like my friend? Took it in. Yeah, was high for three years. I was actually impressed. Jean Girard. Don't make that face. Don't dare. No, that's not it. Four, three. Spanish. Two, I know. Repeat the question, please. <laughs> In Talladega Nights, the ballad of Ricky Bobby, who played French Formula One driver and Bobby's arch rival, Jean Girard. JT, looks like he's yeah, laying by a pool of wine. I don't know the actor's name, but fuck him. Uh, All right. Is it squiggly line again? Five, four, three, I can't remember his name. two, one. Mike? Four at. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> it's going to be a big Rachel. fat. No. Yeah. Sasha Baron Cohen. That's correct. Yeah. JTE. Uh, Sasha Baron Cohen. That's correct. All right. So JTE and Cushing taking a two-point lead. Mike's got to get his maybe get out of the character and get his head in the game. All right. Yeah. Here, here we go. Here we go. Number number three is Oscars. Oscars. What film released in 2001 won the Best Picture at the Academy Awards? Rachel Cushing writing this down. She knows uh, her way around she, the Oscars. She does. Was it she Ali? Does. A lot of people saying I should be hosting the Oscars after that performance. I would week. agree with them. So, uh, I think you were Keep the suit? I love Orange it. suit? No. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Rachel. A Beautiful Mind. Correct. JTE. A Beautiful Mind. Look at JTE and Count Out. Oh. Nothing. Wow. Oh. Count Out's been struggling. I've been there before. I know how I know. This how is that uh, feels. pretty fatal so far for Mike. <laughs> Oh, man. Look can, we, can we give Kalinowski a point for his beard? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or something? Yeah. Right, here we go. Horror thriller is your next category, competitors, and your question. Who plays a zombie by the name of R, who saves a living girl from an attack in warm bodies? Hmm. Mike's struggling. I, I, I really I, I empathize with him. I feel like... I feel like both you and Levine in this situation this, a little bit this, in the This reminds me of myself at the spectacular. It does. Five, four, three, Nicholas two, one. Pens down. JTE. 
Uh, Nicholas Holt? That's correct. Fucking uh, the Beast yeah. in X-Men. Uh, <laughs> Damn it! The emotion's taking over. Uh, Rachel. Nicholas Holt. Look at yeah! that. Rachel oh, and JTE are tied. They're both perfect. 4-4, and Mike Kalinowski's got to get into the game somehow. He's oh, for trouble. four, and I will remind yeah. uh, in the, to appease all the eardrums of our home viewers, please, no matter how much you may have missed the answer by, do not slam your whiteboard, nor uh, your marker, nor your fist Here we go. Here we go. Action adventure for question number five. Which James Bond movie featured Pierce Brosnan's first appearance as Agent 007? So Mike looks like he's got this in his first point. We'll see. I call him a uh, uh, Jimmy Bond. Oh. Yeah. Five. Like, hey, you want a martini, four, Jimmy? The golden three, eye? Two, one. Mike. Golden eye. That's correct. Rachel. Golden eye. There you go. And <laughs> JT. Golden eye. There you go. So. JT and Cushing are still perfect. Mike Kalinowski has one at the moment. He got a point. You he should did. celebrate I, I, that. I think he's got himself on his board. He's got to have a little more confidence. We move on to animated. These are movies that are drawn. What piano playing musician voices the streetwise Dodger in Disney's Oliver and Company? <laughs> I think I saw Five. Oliver and Company. Four. I know Chris Kaliski's seen it many times. Three. three. Ray <laughs> two. Uh, repeat the question. Oh, he using his own rule. What piano playing musician voices the streetwise Dodger in Disney's Oliver and Company? He was the Dodgers almost won the World Series. He did you know? four, three, almost. two, one. Pens down, JT. Pens down, Mike. All right, and Rachel. Billy Joel. Correct. <laughs> JTE. I got Billy. Can I remember the last name? Oh, <laughs> Kalinowski? Didn't have it? Well, I, yeah, I put Stevie Wonder. <laughs> but Rachel Cushing is perfect. Damn it, Billy Joel. How do you get Billy? Uh, like, like, Billy Joel, it's like one yeah. name. How do you, that's like Literally, forgetting Elton all, John. All like, I can was Billy Idol. I, I know it's not Billy Idol. I was like, who's the other Billy? Uh, My first answer was Liberace. So. Uh, <laughs> wow. wow. Rachel Cushing, perfect. JT misses his first one. Mike's still stuck at one. And here we go. Sing us a song. You're the piano person. Yeah, Number seven. Number seven. Here we go. Fantasy sci-fi. Fantasy sci-fi. Aaron Taylor Johnson and Elizabeth Olsen played husband and wife in what 2014 movie? Favorite Olsen twins movie, go. I have no idea. I'm going to say How the West Was Fun. Oh, is that a real thing? Yeah. yeah. You want to come over and watch Five, it? no. Four, Godzilla. Three, two, one, pens down, um, and a little evil. I got Godzilla. Correct. Mike. Godzilla. Correct. Rachel. Godzilla. So yeah! perfect. Wow. History shows again and again how nature flows the folly of man, and we are down to our last question in round one. That is under the realm. Unless Rachel, Comic unless Rachel gets book it. Book right. movies. Rachel, yeah. uh, the Crusher, still pitching a perfect game as of right now. One question left to get that bonus that is going to be asked just to her. Comic book movies is your category. Your question is, who was the second Marvel Cinematic Universe character to have a standalone sequel released? A lot of words to pay JT attention. looks confused. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was like, what? Perplexed. Five, four, four. Wait, hold on. Three. Repeat the question because I didn't That's hear the second one. Second one. <laughs> he, he tried to fight the perplexion. Damn it. Who was the second MCU character to have a standalone sequel released? JT has used two of his own rules. And yeah, it's four. Five, four, three, two. Hands down, Mike Kalinowski. Thor. Correct. Rachel. Thor. Yeah! Thor. So here you go. All right. So they all got it, but Rachel Cushing Thor. has a perfect round. Rachel Cushing, perfect round. So uh, I will be asking Rachel her bonus question here in order to get nine points and a, a two point lead over GTE. Ooh, Six points over Kalinowski, should she get this correct. Here we go. Rachel, what sci fi mashup had the tagline? Whoever wins, we lose. Alien versus Predator? One point for Rachel Cushing. There you go. Rachel Cushing, two point lead. Two point lead. And Mike Kalinowski is down by six. But I'll say this about Kalinowski, though. I mean, look, if you go over for your first four, that really starts to play with your head. He did get three of his last four questions three, correct, yeah. so maybe he's back on the right track. You would hope so, because now round number two, the wheel round comes out. Competitors, it will work like this. The wheel will come out. They will spin the wheel. Yes, they, they will. They will get four questions in their category. 
you can choose to go again unless it lands on opponent's choice. Now, the way it works with steals this for this particular match is when one of the competitors is going, the other two will write their steals on the whiteboard. If the competitor misses, they will be asked to reveal their whiteboard for the steal. So when you guys are listening to the actual question, make sure even if you make sure right away you're writing the answer, even if you're if the opponent is gets it correct. That's a nice uh, that's a nice thing to do. To make sure you're thinking about the correct answer, even if you weren't asked the question. Remember, the question's worth two points. You can go to multiple choice. Yep. At which point the value of the question goes down to one. Rachel, you are clearly in the lead. Would you like to spin first? Or would you like to defer to Little Evil? As always, I'm going first. There we go. All right, Rachel's gonna go first. <laughs> Much like Stallone's character in Cliffhanger, taking yeah. on the action, yeah. coming to the fight. Let's see what they get. Yeah. That is a Stallonean spin. All right. Uh, oh. Comic book movies. Is she going to stick with comic? That's Mike's strength here. Does she stick with it, or does she spin again? Trying to go for something She's else. She's thinking, Christian. See, this is really is, is this, jogging yeah, through the going, noggin. She's going for it. Oh, 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 she's going oh, for it. Oh, All right. Comic wow. book movies. I'll administer the, the questions to Rachel Cushing in comic book movies. All right, Rachel. The world of comic book movies, you have four questions here. And your first question in the world of comic book movies. What man-made structure is shown collapsing at the end of 1978's Superman? The Hoover Dam. For two points. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Yeah. I guess she's seen that movie, yeah. Christian. All right, question two, Rachel. For two points. What race is Ronan the Accuser? Cree. 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 Two points. Whoa. I guess she's seen that movie, yeah. Christian. All right, Rachel, question three. In 2009's Watchmen, what song is being played during the funeral of the comedian? Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple choice. A, Man on the Moon. B, Hallelujah. C, Sounds of Silence. D, What Dreams May Come. C. C. Five. C. One point. That's yeah! correct. All right. So your last, your last question here, Rachel, in the world of comic book movies. What MCU character said the following? Well, now I'm standing. Happy? We're all standing now. A bunch of jackasses Rocket. standing in a circle. Rocket. Two points for Rachel. What a round Is that not Rachel a strength of hers? Did she, did she, do we think she is. wasn't familiar with comic book movies? You better think the again. The strategy was brilliant. She just eliminated the category from Mike Kalinowski, who now, uh, JTE, you are up. Do you want to go? Do you want to defer to Mike? Jason. <laughs> he was getting restless over there. Grouchy old man. You can see him. Yeah. All he right. needs to get back on the TV 12 method. More water and avocados for this guy. All right, here it goes. Good spin. No. Round and round it goes. Got to think JT is looking for that Sly and Arnie category. Musicals! And we are on movie quotes. quotes. Okay. Will you quote yes or no? I was thinking about it. How, was that one of the strengths? We don't know. Yeah, he spins again. Then and again. He's he hungry. He may not want to dress up like Sly, but he certainly loves answering questions about his hero. Look how focused he is. He's a champion for a reason. <laughs> there, there is a chant of Meryl Streep in the crowd. Will it pay off? Okay, new releases. Right. Okay. New releases for JTE. All right, here we go. New releases for JTE. You can go ahead and ask the questions yeah, if you right. so choose. Okay, here we go. JTE, you got four of these. Yeah, First one. All right. Who directed 2017's Murder on the Orient Express? Uh, Kenneth Branagh. Two points. All right. Who directed the 2017 crime drama Detroit? Catherine, Catherine Bigelow. Bigelow. Two points. Literally no one applauds. Oh, this is, this yeah. is shocking. Yeah. Who plays the first human born on Mars, Gardner Elliott, in The Space Between Us? Um, Logan Lerman? Incorrect. Mm. For the steal, you guys have, Mike, you write down the, the steal here. go to multiple oh, choice. And for Rachel, for a two-point steal, if you get it. Ace of Butterfield. Two-point steal. Yeah. Monster, monster steal. monster steal, all right. That, that could even bury Kalinowski, yeah. but we'll see how it affects JTE. We'll see. All right, so your fourth, your fourth and final question, JTE. Yes. Who voiced the lead character of Gene Meh in the Emoji movie? Oh, 
two people I haven't done it to before. Five? Um, Four. Multiple choice. A, TJ Miller. B, James Corden. C, Jason Bateman. D, Chris Parnell. A. a. That's correct for one point. JT. Okay, All right, so, so JT is now down six points. Mike Kalinowski needs a monster round. He needs a perfect round here. Oh, Need Brianne Chandler, bring in some pizza. Oh, bring in some pizza. Up here. pizza. Let's He's see. Some pizza. Does he, he eat it like Mary can He got the pizza with scissors just oh, like the movie. I saw it. I like what it he did. Just oh, like the I, movie. Like it. I see what he did Standing there. ovation from me. Good move. I like it. I like it. All right, now Mike Kalinowski. <laughs> All right, here we go. Mike, you're up. Go That's ahead and give it a cool. good spin. That's, That's a pretty good cool. Like now, Christian, he's down 18 and 12 to three. He, he needs, needs a great spin and maybe eight questions asked to him. He needs, he needs, <laughs> yeah. Well. The street chance again. I like that this chant is a thing now. Riley. Hey, we're going to watch it. Riley. And uh, Mark Riley's our eyes on the prize here. Oscars. It Oscar is Oscar movie. Movie. He spins away. Come on. He is quick. Yeah. yeah. This is it. I thought we were getting slain already for a second. Here we go. It's a funny one. Do not keep a match in your mouth at home, kids. That is that is just as dangerous as a Tide Pod. It is. <laughs> he didn't want it, and he got sad. It's, 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 right. it's one of those. It's one of those things. It's not one of the days. It's just not one of those days for uh, for Mike. Mike Kalinowski. You spun Oscar movies. You didn't want it. You spun it again. You still got Oscar movies. Look at Rachel. Like piranha. For two points, who plays James Dean's girlfriend in 1955's Rebel Without a Cause? Hmm. I know if I need multiple choice. I can provide that. Is it A, Paula Prentice, B, Anne Margaret, C, mm. Natalie Wood, or D, Natalie Angie Dickinson? Wood. Natalie Wood? Give him a point. point. There you go. There you go. Give him a point. One point here. 18, 12, 4. Next question. Here we go. All right, your next question, Mike. The world of Oscar movies. Who won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor for their work in Ordinary People? Um, you know. Five. Dustin Hoffman. And for the for the steal, Rachel. Timothy Hutton. And JT. Liv Tyler. Timothy Liv Tyler. Hutton is correct. Two, Two points, points for Rachel Cushing. Cushing. And with that, Mike Kalinowski has been eliminated. Mm. Mike Kalinowski had a rough night here today. You know what, Mike? You don't need to leave. You all, Mike wants to leave. Yeah. Right. Marion Capretti going to go fight yeah, crime. Not. Maybe he's better suited Mike's for that job. One. All right, so you got Rachel versus JTE here. Rachel had that big 20 points, but... That's it right there. That is round number two. Rachel Cushing has an eight-point lead now going in to round number three. Here's how it works. Both JTE and Rachel will pick three numbers from one to 20. They will get a two-pointer, a three-pointer, and then a five-pointer. JTE is down by eight points. He has to have a very strong third round here. Or Cushing could take this by TKO. Mark, here we go. Rachel, you are in the lead. Please give me... Three numbers. Two, eight, seven. Two, eight, Thought seven. Thought about that seven for a minute. Yep. J uh, JTE. I'll go six, 12, and 19. Six, 12, and 19. All right, Little Evil, you're up first. You're up first with number we'll six. JT, I will be administering your questions in round yeah. three. Your first question in round three comes from the world of fantasy sci-fi. And it is, what actor made their final film performance in The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. Heath Ledger. Two points for JTE. He's still in it. Now, JTE, you have category number 12. Category 12 for your three-pointer. And that is going to correspond up here at our answer desk to movie quotes. Now, JTE needs to hit this. Okay. If he does not, Rachel Cushing will win via T TKO and will be playing Sam Levine for the championship during championship week. All right. All right, here we go. JTE, three-pointer. Your question is, in what film will you hear the following quote? I am not a pirate. More specifically, I am a lawyer. Five, four, three. I'll use the last repeat. Two. Last repeat. Okay. In what film will you hear the following quote? 
I am not a pirate. More specifically, I am a lawyer. Five, four, three, two. I'm going to go ahead and say one. Pirates of the Caribbean. And you're The Crusher is for real. Domination here, wow. Crusher. Look at that, 20 points. And that looks even stronger when you compare the scores of our competitors. JT, 14 points. And Mike Kalinowski, just four. This is why Rachel Cushing won Rookie of the Year. This is why she won pretty much every other award at the Schmodown Awards. Because she might be the next holder of the Almighty Singles Championship belt. Rachel Cushing, had JTE uh, had a chance, made it close, she could have scored close to 30 points. And that's never been done in a three-round match before. She is unbelievable. She is broke. I can't even imagine how many records she broke today. Um, 20 points in a triple threat match. She and she was jogging. She, she was jogging the whole she time. She obliterated Mike Kellen. Now, she had a perfect round in the first round. JTE couldn't even catch up. That's the team champion of the world, and he, and she, he couldn't do anything against She's her. just jogging. She's just jogging. Just getting the heart rate warm. That's, that is an amazing match by Rachel Cushing. And I can't wait to hear from Mark Yodi Riley, who has the number one contender, Rachel Cushing, in the interview right now. What's up, movie trivia Schmodown fans? And I am here with the number one contender, your winner of the triple threat match, Rachel the Crusher Cushing. How are you feeling? Pretty damn awesome. Damn to be honest. good. <laughs> yeah, that was a hell of a match. Thank you. Uh, so, what was going through your mind when that started? I mean, you ran the table, you had perfect, a perfect eight, you got the bonus point, mm -hmm. and then going in hot on the round two. What was going through your mind after that first round? Um, that I had it. Yeah. Honestly, like I, I felt, I've never felt in the groove like I felt today. Um, I don't know what it is. I, I, I'll have to figure it out so I can do it from now on. But I just, I felt comfortable. I felt rested after the break. I felt ready for the new season. And I took it one question at a time. And everyone that I got right, I got more confident. And then getting the bonus and having played two perfect rounds now, uh, I was just like, I've got this. Yeah, it showed. And uh, Mark Ellis said it. You were kind of jogging. You barely broke a sweat, and I was watching. I was watching it cool and collected. Was that the feeling when you got comic book movies? Not a lot of people look at you, Lord of the Rings, sure, but you know, you've competed in inner geek yeah. terms of comic book movies. That's a strength. Is it, that why you stuck with it? Absolutely. I mean, it was twofold. I mean, I, I knew Mike was not out yet, and I knew that that was a category he was gunning for. So for me to take it and hopefully get them right, that took points away from him. I love you, Mike, but you got to play the game. Um, but yeah, I, I know I'm a Lord of the Rings girl and a Harry Potter girl, but I play in the inner geek, dude. And if you go back and watch those matches, I get comic book movies right a lot of the time. So it shouldn't be that big of a surprise that I did well. That's right. And you got a lot of those questions, right? I believe you got multiple choice on only one. Yep. Yeah. That was impressive. So... Looking forward to your next match, Sam Levine. How are you feeling? Are you going to carry that, that confidence in with you? I mean, you are now. We had Classy Clark Wolf, the only female in the, in the league to challenge twice for a title match. No longer. Now that's you. How are you feeling going in uh, against uh, the current champion, Sam Levine? I feel really good. I'm glad I broke the curse of I played in several number one contender matches and lost, came up short this time. Not the case. So that feels good going in. I have the momentum. That feels good. Um, Sam's no joke. Are you, Sam? Hey. <laughs> Sam is no joke. And look who it is, our current champion. What's up, yeah. champ? Hey, oh, how you doing, champ? Oh, well, I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, I just, I just, I, real quick, I just wanted to do something. I just wanted to make sure that, yeah. Oh, we're look gonna, at that. Yeah. We're going to have to have that resized <laughs> to, fit, uh, to fit you. It is mine, though, for the time being. Okay, so. so I'm going to hang on to it for just a little bit more. But I got to say, after... What you just did here, I am going to need to pull some kind of magic rabbit out of my asshole if I <laughs> want to stand a chance against you. But I will say this. I pulled that magic rabbit out of my asshole once before, so let's see if there's anything else in there. <laughs> well, so uh, going into it, are you going to study it all? Are you just, is it, you know what you know? You don't need to study? I mean... You might need to study with this one here. Oh, I definitely. I'm going to do the like the Nathan's hot dog challenge of studying to try to compete with the powerhouse performance 
that she just put on here. I, I mean, there's nothing to say other than, while I still have this thing, I'm going to enjoy it and sleep in bed every night with it and, and, and cuddle it and tell it I love it. And if I somehow get to keep it, um, just know that that, that might be uh, my, my second miracle. And then I think I'm qualified for sainthood. <laughs> I believe it's true that yeah. you could be uh, qualified for sainthood, especially going against the Crusher. I'm here now with the current champ, Sam Levine, the number one contender, Rachel the Crusher Cushing. Movie Trivia Schmodown fans, we got a good one coming up. We'll see you next time. You gotta love Sam Levine. He's such an honorable champion. Just an all-around nice guy. That is going to be a fantastic match between him and Rachel. I, for one, cannot wait. What's up, movie trivia schmodown fans? Mark Yodi Riley here with the loser of the triple threat. Number one contender match, JTE, Little Evil. Let me say one thing first. I, I did lose. Yes, I you did. Lost. Yes, you did lose. And that's rare for me. And I want to give all respect to Rachel, but at the end of the day, I do feel like I beat myself. Yeah, and I, uh, how's that? how so, Little Evil? Billy Joel. Uptown girl, we didn't start the fire. I know his freaking name, but I, it just couldn't come to me. I wrote Billy. Time ran out. I love Oliver Company. It's one of my favorite Disney movies, actually. Yeah. So usually when I hear anime, I'm like, oh crap. That was but, rough. Yeah. Uh, you, you were hanging in there, though. You had hanging a great. I was right you had there. a great first round. The second round is where you lost some steel points, where the crusher took off. How did you feel in that moment? Were you worried? Did, did you <sighs> think you could get back in it? I never saw that damn Mars kid movie, Asa. Butterfield, Asa Butterfield. you want to call him? I, listen, Logan Lerman and that guy and all these other kids that did these like YA novel movies, they're all interchangeable to me. So I was just like, Logan Lerman, I guess? He was in a bunch of those things. Yeah, uh, That's the was. only one I should have gone to multiple choice. I believe I answered just about every question right until then, including uh, I would have gotten the extra point for Alien vs. Predator. Again, I really feel like I let myself down. Uh, more than somebody beat me. I really just felt like I let myself down. Well, I think you let a lot of your fans down, but uh, that's okay. You are little See, evil. I got to disagree with you there. I think people saw me and they were like, oh my God, he didn't lose to somebody. He lost himself. Is but that what, what they're saying? That's exactly what they're saying. Are you I, saying that? Listen, I got a fan club. They tell me these things all the time. Um, I'm still the champion. Uh, team I'm, champion. Yeah, team champion, of course. Well, that means I know double the knowledge of all any other person out here. I could win this thing with Snyder or without him, but he's my brother, and we won it together. Well, it's my understanding there would be no math here, but that does check out. So so what's next, JT? Well, listen, anytime you have a loss to yourself, you want to get back on there and just get a win. So why not face the one guy who I've never lost to in anything ever? Uh, I'm going to just challenge Roca. For me, it's just kind of like, you know, a sparring session before I get back in that free-for-all. Somebody just, I'm just going to beat up on him. You know, just throw him away. Kind of like did the Kill Kilinowski today or Vanillowski. Man, was that guy? What did he just what happened there? He uh, just kind of showed up. He may have just written stuff for me. I should have just said, Here's my answer, write it for me. Oh, he had he, a bad he game, you know, but assistant. you know, you want to kick the guy when he's down, go for it. I That's mean, cool. how can I not kick him when he's down? If I walk, I'm gonna hit him. That's how low he is. All right, uh, well, that was JTE, Little Evil, living up to the name. I'm Mark Yodi Riley. What's up, movie trivia? Schmodown fans, Mark Yodi Riley here. Mike Kalinowski, the loser of the uh, triple threat number one contender match, not here, but I have Miss Movies, Brian Chandler. What happened? Where, where's Mike? Well, uh, Mike is disappointed. He's a little upset, so he's he's not here right now. Um, I wouldn't say loser. I'd say third place. How about we how about we reword things around here? Third place is fine by go. me. So, uh, do you know what's going through Mike's head? Has he told you why he he left? I know he's upset. We've all had those mm -hmm. games. It sucks. But what what do you know what was going through his mind? I don't because I haven't. Sp spoken with him since since he left but what I can gather is you know he's already played JTE once and lost to him came in second I should say mm -hmm. uh, he also played Rachel and in inner geekdom came in second so I think he's feeling a little defeated right now and was hoping to have a better showing today okay well the question a lot of people out there have uh, what's going on with you two like are, is there something coming that maybe you can tease for us here uh, can I tease anything for you here well Okay, I'm feeling I'm feeling a little generous, so good, I'll let good, you know good, good. we have a team match that we're going to be doing. A team, you and yeah. Kalinowski, KO right. together on a team. A team match. A team match. 
All right, is well, what I'll say. I'll let that play out and okay. uh, speculate over there. And what's next for you, uh, Brianne Chandler? Oh, that's the real big question. Mm, that that's not going to be a question we're going to answer today, though. But uh, thanks, Mark. Uh, I gave you one thing. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much for speaking for K.O. Kalinowski. We're hoping he's going to pick himself right up. Back to you, Christian and Mark, at the table. Now look, Rachel Cushing and Sam Levine. Sam came in, was very humble when he walked yeah, into. Yeah, expect him to be that. Of course he is. He's a, he's a good nice champion. Guy. He walked in, and, and they have played before. Sam holds a victory over Rachel. It's her only loss. You know she's going to be looking to avenge that loss, and he's going to be looking. He, I know Sam very well. Sam wants to be in that Mark Riley and Dan Murrow club of defending the belt at least once. It's not so, your belt till you defend it. Isn't that right? Well, well we're going to find out. Okay. I mean, and then obviously you've got JTE and, and Mike Kalinowski kind of bickering at each other in the in the back interview together. You that's that just a lot of, of that. That's a lot yeah. of, hey, we lost. We're upset about our performance right. today going back and forth. But, you know, going forward, I think I, I respect both of them as competitors. But if there's one person that proved their championship medal here, there's one person that Sam Levine is going to be up at night thinking about. Yeah. I think it's the Crusher Cushing. I think so. Oh, man, I mean, Rachel Cushing is uh, she's for real. I mean, that's I've got to say, and I'll go ahead and I'll say it. I think she is the best player we have seen since Dan Merle. Great, Christian, we just started the season. I'm just okay, you, I just, you know, let's just all let's just all she, take a breath. This is the most cool, calm, and collected she's ever been. Her head was was focused. She was she played. It was the same. She did the same thing she did against Stacy Howard in this match. She was cool, calm, and collected. She's getting much better. You can see the growth in her as a player. She just continued what she did in season number four and made it into season five with a dominating victory. And by the way, by the way, what category is she taking round two? Comic book. Who? Who knew? Strategical. That was brilliant. It was. It was it brilliant was, because what it did was it eliminated it any chance of Mike coming back. It, it, it was a brilliant move. And JTE was just, JT couldn't handle it. JT was in the first round, a great first round. But you know what it was? It was that second round. Rachel kept stealing points. Mm -hmm. She used the triple threat format, and she kept taking the points on the board. It was an amazing, amazing victory. She earned it, and I can't wait for Cushing Levine, too. Rachel Cushing is for real. You know what else is for real? The Patreon we just started. Uh, Make like sure it. you guys like go it. check out the Patreon. All the tiers get involved in the movie Trivia Schmodown. Also, check out the movie Trivia Schmodown, the Facebook page on, guess it, Facebook and the Schmodown Rundown. You can catch it on iTunes at any juncture. Yeah, make sure, once again, guys, thank you so much. We're going to build this league together. Like I said, look at all the tiers. Go and check them out. There's a lot of cool stuff. You are a movie trivia Schmodown fan. Guarantee there's something in there for you. Go and check it out. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I have my little message to everyone. I cannot thank you enough for everything you've already done. Help us take this thing to the next level, guys. From Mark Ellis, I'm Christian Harloff. The number one contender is Rachel the Crusher Cushing. She will be battling Sam Levine during championship week at the end of February. Get ready for it. It's going to be something. What's up, Shrodown fans? Frank here, and the season opening triple threat match was just what we needed to kickstart 2018. So let's do this. It's your Shrodown breakdown. And the winners! In one of the single greatest performances in Schmodown history, Rachel Cushing absolutely dominated this match in every sense of the word. She had a perfect first round, and it's the second time she's done it in her career. Now, in the second round, she took full advantage of the steal opportunities, and that helped her earn 11 points in the round. And there was no need to answer any questions in the third round, and she won by TKO. Now, if we take a closer look at the numbers for this match, we see that Mike Kalinowski had his worst performance of his career, going 4 of 11 and not even making it out of the second round. This performance dropped his career by nearly 3.5%. As for JTE, he had a respectable game going 11 of 15 and earned 61% of the points available to him. But the real story, and everyone knows it, it is Rachel Cushing. She went 15 of 15 which includes going two for two on steals, and she earned every single point thrown her way, except for one when she went to multiple choice back in round two on the third question. For more stats on the Schmodown, check out SD Rundown Stats on Twitter right now, and be sure to check out the Schmodown Rundown podcast this Saturday on the SK Plus YouTube channel or on the Schmo's Note podcast feed on iTunes. Myself, Brad Gilmore, and special guest this week, Aaron Turner, break down this match and all the news from this past week. This has been your Schmodown Breakdown. Yeah, you know what? That was a ton of fun. I am so excited to be back in the ring. We are going to do such great things this year. Um, but yeah, so uh, I'm excited to meet up and talk about all of this. Uh, and you know what? 
My partner just got here. All right, we'll see you in a bit. All right, bye. Hey, partner. Let's go. Woo-hoo. Oh, did you think that we were going to leave you hanging again? Of course it's me. Shire Wolves. Well, well. Whoa. What do we have? Rachel and Clark. Woo-hoo. That's going to be one hot ticket. I was predicting Rachel and Andraco were going to team up, but I was wrong. I can't wait to watch them debut. You know, today was a, a really tough day for me. The anniversary of when my mom died. But, you know, I'm thankful to Christian, Mark, everybody at Collider. Because the Schmodown is a great escape for me. So to all of you fine people, thank you. You all have made life worth living. So, uh, this is Steve Dub, Chris Woodburn with another reaction. If you like my vids, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Christopher Woodburn. You can find me on Twitter at ChrisWoodburn83. We're on Facebook at Christopher Michael Woodburn. If you do Schmodown reactions, come join the MTS fan reaction page on Facebook. It's a lot of fun. You'll enjoy yourself. Until next time, peace.